Uh, NASA will repeat uh, the official mantra that 3 i Atlas is a natural comet and that they were unable to process the data until now because of the government shutdown. Um, I expect the high-rise image to show a fuzzy ball of light uh, like the Hubble image did, uh, but I hope to be surprised. And I must say that I was not surprised. This was exactly what we heard. And uh, in particular, um, there were a number of images obtained by various uh, missions, uh, NASA missions, uh, and the collection of images presented, uh, as well as uh, some spectroscopic data, include fuzzy images uh, that do not add much uh, insight to uh, the properties of Three Atlas. Uh, they um, marginally, they have some marginally new information, uh, but they don't address the anomalies, the 12 anomalies that I pointed out. And there was no mention uh, of the primary puzzles that are associated with 3i Atlas. Everyone was looking forward to NASA's long-awaited 3i Atlas event. Anticipation had been building, live streams scheduled, discussions exploding online with people hoping to finally see the detailed and groundbreaking imagery. Excitement was everywhere, except in one place, Avi Loeb wasn't celebrating. His pessimism had nothing to do with drama or negativity. It came from experience. He had been asking NASA for months to release real scientific data, urging the agency to put aside internal agendas and offer the public true transparency. But based on how many times his requests had been ignored or deflected, Loeb was already bracing for disappointment. Even so, he hoped that maybe this time would be different. It wasn't. NASA unveiled its carefully curated set of images and they fell far below expectations. JWST's contribution amounted to little more than a cluster of pixels. Hubble's image was blurry and grainy, and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter's high-rise photo, presented as NASA's best, looked like a glowing smudge. After all the buildup, after all the anticipation, NASA's imagery revealed almost nothing. And more importantly, their commentary avoided everything critical. The anomalies that make 3i Atlas so extraordinary, its unusual chemical signature, its rigid and unwavering jets, its improbable ecliptic alignment, its massive size compared to previous interstellar objects, and even its contradictory tail orientations were not addressed at all. Instead, NASA repeated the familiar just-to-comment framing without engaging the underlying questions. Meanwhile, amateur astronomers continued capturing images far clearer than anything in NASA's official release, revealing multiple jets, evolving tails, and consistent structural details over time, exactly the kinds of features NASA glossed over. As those independent observations spread, one question becomes increasingly difficult to ignore. Why are amateur sky watchers revealing what the world's leading space agency will not? Under the surface, a deeper tension was building, not just about image quality, but about what those images failed to explain. For Loeb, the silence around these anomalies was more revealing than the data itself. 3i Atlas is not a small object behaving normally. By all indications, it may be several kilometers across, potentially far larger than any interstellar visitor ever observed. Its mass scale alone challenges expectations. If Oumuamua and Borisov were representative of typical interstellar objects, then discovering a third object that is potentially a thousand times more massive is statistically absurd. In Loeb's view, this should have been central to NASA's discussion. Instead, it was avoided entirely. The release of NASA's 3i Atlas imagery was intended to calm speculation and provide clarity. Instead, it did the opposite. Across the agency's vast fleet of spacecraft, from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter to James Webb, Hubble, MAVEN, Lucy, Punch, and various solar probes, the images presented to the public were unexpectedly poor in quality. Rather than revealing structure, jets, or a nucleus, nearly every frame amounted to a diffuse glow, a bright smudge, or a solitary pixel dominated by the coma. For an object stirring global scientific interest, the visuals felt surprisingly underwhelming. 
James Webb's image, taken on August 6, contained little more than scattered pixels, lacking any recognizable features that could shed light on the object's geometry. Hubble's July observation was similarly disappointing, grainy, indistinct, and offering no insight into the physical dynamics of 3i Atlas. Even the image that NASA labeled as their highest resolution capture from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter's high-rise camera failed to provide meaningful detail. High-rise is among the sharpest imaging instruments ever placed around another planet, yet the resulting picture showed a single bright pixel representing the densest part of the coma with a resolution of roughly 20 kilometers per pixel. The entire nucleus, whatever its size or shape, was completely obscured. The image looked more like a street lamp blurred by thick fog than a close approach observation of an interstellar object. The problem went beyond low resolution. NASA's own dataset appeared inconsistent. One instrument showed what looked like a sunward-facing bulge in the coma. Another, taken days earlier or later, suggested an anti-sunward tail behavior typical of a comet pushed by the solar wind. Yet another ultraviolet image recorded a glowing hydrogen cloud extending tens of thousands of miles in all directions, with no clear indication of tail orientation at all. These contradictions, which should have prompted scientific explanation, were left unaddressed. NASA made no attempt to reconcile them instead presenting each image in isolation without focusing on the physical differences between them. The punch satellite data raised additional questions. In the composite images released by NASA, Mars passed through the frame alongside 3i Atlas. Mars appeared as a small, deeply pixelated blob, barely recognizable despite being a bright nearby planet. Yet the interstellar object, much farther away, showed up more clearly in the stacked frames. While there may be technical explanations involving exposure times or data processing approaches, none were provided. The visual result left many observers puzzled. How could a planet appear worse in the imagery than a fast-moving visitor millions of miles farther from the cameras? As scientists and enthusiasts combed through the official material, one theme became evident. The nucleus of 3i Atlas remained completely unresolved. NASA estimated the size to fall somewhere between 1,400 feet and 3.5 miles across, but these numbers are ultimately speculative because the coma blocks direct observation. Other scientific groups, based on brightness, mass, and coma expansion models, have proposed sizes as large as 50 kilometers, more than an order of magnitude larger. High-rise, with its 20-kilometer resolution per pixel, cannot distinguish between a 2-kilometer object and a 30-kilometer one. Both appear as the same bright dot. This means NASA's size estimate relies on indirect modeling rather than confirmed measurement. Yet no acknowledgement of this limitation was made during the briefing. Another conspicuous omission involved the plasma environment around 3i Atlas. MAVEN's ultraviolet imagery clearly showed a massive hydrogen envelope surrounding the object, a telltale sign of ionized gases interacting with sunlight and the solar wind. Plasma inherently involves electric and magnetic fields, charge exchange, and complex particle flows that can dramatically influence a comet's appearance, tail shape, and jet behavior. Despite this, plasma was barely mentioned. Instead of discussing how ionization might contribute to the contradictory tail directions or the unusually bright coma, NASA avoided the subject entirely. This emission struck many as odd, given that plasma dynamics are central to understanding comets, solar interactions, and heliophysics more broadly. While the agency's images struggle to show coherent structure, a very different picture was emerging from Earth. Amateur astronomers across multiple countries began releasing their own observations, captured using commercially available telescopes and camera systems. Their images showed consistent, repeatable features, 
multiple jets radiating away from the object, a clear anti-sunward tail, a well-defined coma, and, at times, a prominent sunward-facing jet. The level of detail in these photographs far exceeded anything NASA had presented. Over several nights, independent observers recorded the jets changing subtly in intensity and angle as the object rotated and interacted with the solar wind. Some images identified up to five distinct jets emanating from the nucleus region. The tail grew clearer with each passing day as 3 Eye Atlas moved further from the glare of the sun, revealing a long, structured plume that responded dynamically to space weather. What stood out most was the consistency. Observers separated by thousands of miles captured nearly identical structures, confirming that what they documented was not an artifact of equipment or processing, but a genuine physical feature of the object. In contrast, NASA's images lacked even the most basic representation of these jets. The official visuals did not show distinct plumes, multi-jet configurations, or structured tails, despite the fact that amateurs consistently recorded them. Whether this was due to instrument limitations, exposure times, or selective presentation is unclear. But the difference in clarity between NASA's billion-dollar instruments and backyard observatories created a perception problem. NASA insisted that its images were the best available, yet the global amateur community produced sharper and more scientifically useful material using modest equipment. The contrast does not necessarily imply wrongdoing, but it does raise legitimate questions about methodology and focus. Many of NASA's spacecraft were not designed to image fast-moving objects passing behind or near bright bodies like the sun. Others have narrow scientific missions unrelated to cometary imaging, and their imaging systems are optimized for different wavelengths or field of view constraints. Even so, the failure to acknowledge these limitations or to explain why certain features appeared in amateur images but not NASA's left a vacuum that speculation quickly filled. Complicating the situation further is NASA's deliberate framing. From the beginning of the live stream, the agency emphasized that 3i Atlas is a comet, repeating the classification before presenting the data needed to support it. The category might be correct, but leading with a conclusion rather than building toward it left some feeling that the narrative was predetermined. With anomalies unmentioned, inconsistencies unaddressed, and uncertainties downplayed, NASA's presentation came across as controlled rather than inquisitive, tidy rather than transparent. The real test will come in December 2025 when 3i Atlas reaches its closest approach to Earth. At that point, major observatories around the world will have direct access with the highest possible resolution. Hubble and James Webb will be able to isolate components of the coma and jets with unprecedented sensitivity. Ground-based telescopes like the Very Large Telescope, Keck, and Subaru will be capable of detailed spectroscopy across multiple wavelengths. ALMA may detect subtle molecular signatures invisible to optical instruments, while Gaia could refine the object's motion with micro-arcsecond precision. This global campaign will produce more data than any single agency can control, and more clarity than any one narrative can shape. In the end, the story of 3i Atlas is still unfolding. The data released so far raises as many questions as it answers, and the images from Earth challenge the notion that the narrative is settled. Whether the object proves to be a typical comet, an unusual interstellar fragment, or something even more complex, the coming year will bring unprecedented opportunities to study it. Until then, the contrast between NASA's presentation and the independent observations will continue driving debate and reminding us that discovery thrives when evidence is explored, not simplified.